the voice referendum and debate have been controversial. The debate has been firing up. Major corporations and sporting teams have lined up behind the voice. However, support for it amongst the general public has been falling. Many people are undecided, and support has been waning. One of the reasons for this could be concerns about whether the voice is inherently racist and discriminatory. The concerns that one group of people will gain a special benefits, a special access, or a special funding on the basis of their race, and with this will be enshrined in the constitution, whereas other ethnic groups or nationalities do not gain that support. Now, to see this, we need to think about what exactly racism entails. Well, racism entails treating one group of people differently from another group of people. Now, this can be given a special benefit. So, for example, promoting or hiring people on the basis of race. It could be perhaps giving them largesse at the expense of other individuals. Conversely, racism can involve discrimination. It can involve holding someone back from a job. It can involve holding them back from promotions. It can involve general sledging. In any case, you've got those two types of racism. One is that affirmative racism, that is where you're giving someone benefits, which is implicitly at the expense of the people who don't get those benefits. The other one is going out and straight up criticizing or attacking that other person. In any case, they are both racist. To see some of this, we can think about the Fair Work Act in Australia. Under the Fair Work Act, it specifically prohibits racist conduct. It specifically prohibits so-called adverse action on the basis of race or nationality. That adverse action would involve, say, holding someone back from a promotion, or perhaps not hiring that person, or perhaps treating them differently at work on the basis of race. This means that if you were to go out and promote someone on the basis of race, whereas other races don't get access to those promotions, they would be racist and likely violate the Fair Work Act. This means that in Australia, things such as affirmative action are relatively difficult for corporations to legally employ. That doesn't mean they don't occur, because obviously challenging affirmative action is difficult. It's very difficult to do that through the media, because the media will often line up to support it. But nevertheless, it is a very difficult thing for corporations to legally get off the ground. They would need to go through many hoops to be able to establish that affirmative action is desirable and necessary in the organization. Now this all leads us back to the voice referendum. Under the voice referendum, it specifically states, in recognition of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and First Peoples of Australia, one, there shall be a body called the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Voice. Two, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Voice may make representations to the Parliament and to the Executive Government of the Commonwealth on matters relating to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Three, the Parliament shall, subject to this constitution, have the power to make laws with respect to matters relating to the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Voice, including its composition, functions, powers, and procedures. Now here, implicitly, this voice is going to be primarily made up of people from Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander background, and we're making representations on matters, quote, relating to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. The thing is, however, the matters relating to those peoples actually includes everything. Voice architects have specifically indicated that the voice could make representations to bodies such as the RBA, or make representations on climate change, effectively everything, because everything can relate to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Now, this is not an assumption. It is not just made up. It is specifically what the voice architects have indicated. This means that the voice body can make representations on almost anything. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong, per se, with having a body made up of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island peoples in order to perhaps provide input on matters directly relating to them. The real problem here, however, relates to two things. First, this body does in fact have power. It has power because it has access and funding. Not every individual has access and funding to the RBA. Not every individual can go out and make representations on climate change and have those actually listened to. Rather, it is only the voice. Only the voice has access. That access gives it power because other people do not have that access. This inherently means that those individuals, the voice body, can get more power, more representations, and can have more input into policy setting, more input than other people would have. This access gives it power, and anyone who says otherwise is effectively just gaslighting. Now, this then leads us on to the composition and the fact that it is going to be for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. This means you have a body made up of and decided upon by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples that has a special access and a special funding that other nationalities or ethnicities do not have access to. So say, for example, as people who have immigrated here from China, 
Well, people from China don't have this body enshrined in the constitution. They don't have particular government funding or necessarily government access to go out and make representations to the RBA or a climate change body or any other body. Rather, it is only the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander voice that has that access. Only that voice that has the funding. Only that voice that therefore has the power. Other nationalities and ethnicities do not have such power. They are effectively left out of this proposal. This means that the voice is giving additional power, additional say, and additional funding to one group of people on the basis of their nationality or ethnicity. This, by definition, is racist when other nationalities and ethnicities are not given that same right. No one can argue that if this were only in relation to things directly related to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples in order to make better informed decisions, then that could make some sense. There could be a good reason for such a body existing, albeit not one enshrined in the constitution. But here, because they make representations on everything, potentially grinding some parts of government to a halt if the government doesn't listen to them because it could be litigated, or potentially just having additional say into policy setting that other people don't have, that is implicitly racist. And anyone who is saying otherwise is effectively gaslighting. The voice proponents are effectively trying to say that it is okay to give additional powers and additional say to people on the basis of race and ethnicity, and they're trying to say that that's not racist. That's gaslighting. It makes no sense. It's not clear why it is that the voice is not racist because it's giving additional power to people on the basis of race, which is in fact the very definition of racist. And anyone who says otherwise is being disingenuous. And for this reason, many Australians are waking up to this and support for the voice is slipping. Now this all puts us in a rather peculiar situation. Some commentators insist that if people vote no in the referendum, they in fact will be supporting racism, or send a negative signal overseas, a negative signal in general, or make Australia look backward or racist or retrograde, or send a negative signal, an unwelcoming signal. However, in reality, if people are voting no, then they're voting no to discrimination. They're voting no to giving one particular group of people additional powers, additional rights, additional access, additional funding on the basis of race. What people would effectively be saying is that all Australians should be treated equal. When people vote no, they're saying that everyone is equal under the constitution. They're saying no to racism. They're saying no to discrimination. Therefore, it's curious that some commentators insist otherwise. It's rather Orwellian for them to say that by voting no to racism, you're in fact racist. That is a little bit odd. It seems very strange. It seems like it's gaslighting. It seems like it is disingenuous. It seems like many of the Yes supporters are in fact either not reading the constitutional amendment, not fully understanding it, or simply don't care. Therefore, by voting no, it is in fact voting against racism. It is in fact what Australians should be doing. It is treating everyone equally. And after all, under the constitution, all Australians should be equal. Because racism needs to be stamped out.